Hey guys, John from Techercise and today's video is focused on my scratch build project uh, that was named Project Squirkle. Now I have a great deal to talk about but this is basically uh, a catch up video because I do have plans to finally overhaul um, and not so much finish the project because it was finished but I, I wanted to change and tweak and make the design a little bit more interesting shall we say. Uh, on top of that, I do have some early plans. I don't know whether it will materialise, but I really would like, if time permits, to produce uh, version 2, which will be downsized considerably and will be either micro or mini uh, ATX format, a much smaller downsized version, if you like. But that's very much just a random idea. So. Uh, catch up, we will have to go all the way back um, to the LAN event that I went to. If you're not familiar with the project at all, there are some links in the description below where you can head off and sort of see how I've got to this point um, from the designing stage to the fabrication to the LAN event. The LAN event, let's say, wasn't a massive success because I had quite a few problems. Um, Travelling down there, the acrylic work, the custom work that I had done, did not uh, travel well. It, it cracked in two sections. At that time, this entire panel here at, at the base uh, was white. It was a very last minute addition. And just to sort of rake over that, I wasn't happy with the build in terms of how it looked. It was functional, uh, excuse me, but it wasn't too to my liking should I say and it wasn't what I wanted to show for the sponsors involved um, so anyway there was problems with the acrylic and I don't know for sure what happened with power whether it was uh, something coming loose during travel or uh, I really don't know but I had to fill the loop at the event which was quite an experience I had about 10-15 minutes tops to try and get this loop filled before the uh, public was allowed into the hall which was thousands of people so the pressure was on and um, the loop filling wasn't too bad it was powering up I, I was getting into windows um, and then I left the machine for 15 minutes to take a break come back no power um, and then it was very sort of you know I wasn't sure what was going on it was working minute it wasn't the next and then it just packed up in terms of power uh, nothing was running as it should um, and then I had various other complications which basically meant that it didn't get shown uh, and it definitely wasn't in the condition that I liked um, so with the rig back at home over the next week or two I made some small changes to colours and placements um, and the power issue what, what I was left with was damage to the all the main fans, my Cooler Master fans, are all now non-functioning. I had two at the rear, I had two at the front. These were the Cooler Master Jet Flows with the white LEDs. Uh, I had three on the radiator and it looked fantastic. It was an absolute perfect match for the build in terms of the colours and the lights. Um, and I don't know what went wrong, but it did and those fans are now retired. So I had that issue um, and as I say I spent some time changing it in terms of adding some vinyl colours and I made some IO covers. But I basically wanted to improve it and get it to the point where I was more comfortable. Um, you know modders and builders will probably all agree. You very rarely get to a point where you're completely happy with the build but I, you know I wanted it to be better. Um, so a lot of time was spent improving the design and there was a lot of ideas on the pipeline and then the pump decided it was going to silicon heaven so you know the loop was out of the question in terms of getting it up and running for some time um, and then I've just been busy that is the truth of the matter I've been busy with real life reviews it just you know it's been what it is a snowball effect um, so with the turn of the start of the new year I had big plans to get everything up and running again and the major thing is the GPU block I've been waiting for 
quite some time, a number of months, to fit the block um, because it didn't have a block in the loop. Again, if you're not familiar, do check the links below. Um, but <laughs> I had an absolute ton of feedback. Um, I'm not going to get into the every single question or every single comment that's been made because it, the build has been you know, shared a lot on social media and I've had some fantastic responses. It's been really a delight to read them all. But the question that kept cropping up is why are you air cooling well one why are you air cooling the gpu when you water cool and everything else that's stupid two why have you got a msi amd 270x and i've tried to explain it a million times i'm going to go over it again i'm not trying to be ignorant but it is frustrating um because i have had the answer there in the thread for a long time but this is the card that msi provided me this is the card that suits my needs. This is the card that I use. It's as simple as that. But anyway, um, the blocks come in. It's fitted. I'm absolutely delighted with it. There is some scope and some potential for slightly changing it. Um, perhaps just colours. I don't imagine I'll do much to it. Um, because I've moved away from what a lot of people call MSI red or red and red, white and black because it's just the most detested uh, overused colour scheme in the world and that's a shame because it is probably the best colour scheme in the world um, for builds, particular builds shall I say um, and I was very I wasn't pushed but you know the timing of all that feedback and my personal opinion about not really being overly excited about the red um, after looking at it for so long and then we had the MSI Create Edition motherboards uh, make an appearance so I will overlay some images now and, and what I did was I modified the, the heat sinks on the motherboard and the GPU to give it a much more neutral black and white theme so obviously there is still some red present for starters the motherboard in there is not the motherboard that I use let's just turn it this way this is the GD65 Gaming Edition Z87 is just in there as a placeholder. Also the GPU now has a block so you can't really see what I did to that but I will drop some images as we're chatting. Um, so the real push was to turn down the red and eliminate it as much as possible. Because obviously I had the red plates here. Um, I had red liquids. I had some red plates behind these two cut out windows for my SSDs. It wasn't really too much, but I wasn't keen on it. Um, and this what you know, this is what happens when you work on a project for so long. You have a, a goal in sight, and <laughs> as much as you want to stick to it, things change along the way. So um, let's just talk about where I'm at now. Obviously, I've had lots of problems with the build, um, but now I'm focused on changing up a lot of the final looks and then I do want to move on to something else now with the GPU in the loop I did always plan ahead from day one to have an additional point I just didn't make the cuts for the two pass-through ports I didn't want to commit to pre-drilling any holes at the top here because I didn't know exactly how I was going to loop it up this is probably the most likely um, loop that I'm going to go for because it, it ties in, I know you can't see it now, but if, if I overlay an image on the left you can see how the piping for the CPU and memory worked um, and I wanted to try and keep it as close to that as possible so as I said I didn't pre-drill those so obviously those need to go in um, I do want to slightly tweak the top pipes um, I've lost this space now because it used to come to a, a T at the front here and then split off and then go back down into the reservoirs and now have to push that back a bit also the radiator I used to sit flat on this top shelf with the uh, fans blowing straight down on it and, you know that wasn't the most efficient way to do it it was always meant to be uh, attached to the roof so obviously I need to drill the holes for the fans um, refit the radiator a little bit higher I need to get the GPU into the loop. I need to come back to some of these boxes and uh, acrylic pieces that I've made and they need touched up and this one needs you know, made again because it's snapped in half. 
Um, now that I've lost the Cooler Master fans, I'm at a point where I'll either replace them, like for like, or I might use something else. Uh, and the model that I'm probably going to be using is the Noise Blocker A Loop fans, the black and white fans. I'll overlay an image somewhere. Um, but I will talk about this vinyl that you can probably see. Uh, I put the image on Facebook on my personal account absolutely months ago um, so brace yourselves because it is quite a mess um, it doesn't look exactly like it did then um, and I just had some scrap acrylic and all I was doing was sort of prototyping a design um, I, I was going to do paint or I was going to overlay some acrylic I was torn I didn't know what I wanted to do in this vinyl wrap um, <clears throat> I had a, a lot Space, so I initially just wrapped it all in red um, and then started overlaying some stripes and reusing some of the uh, branding vinyls. And um, at a certain point while I was doing it, I was quite happy with it, but then I started cutting into it and changing things on the fly, and uh, it's become an absolute mess. And of course, it is coming off. Um, and what I think I'm going to do, I've got two designs in mind. I'm either going to replicate the MSI 970 and 980E Twin Frozer 5 um, and build it out of acrylic so that it kind of looks like a GPU cooler sort of top heat sink here, the, the shroud part of it with the two fans. I might try and replicate something like that or I might just go for something a little bit cleaner to, to tie it together so around the back there's absolutely nothing to talk about other than the power supplies out at the moment because I'll just get this out of the way now the power supply I'm using is a Cooler Master V850 fully modular and I did have some custom made cables in there um, and it was an absolute nightmare to make because it's a 24 pin on the mother side, motherboard sorry side, um, and that branches off to a let me think an 18 and a 10 pin, which means there are double wires and things that I had to solder. And I was never 100% happy with this cable, um, and the colours I'm not really sure about now. So what I've done is I've made an order at E22. From Nate and I've got some a different grey. It's a slightly darker grey because I've still got some of the original left over. I've still got some white. Um, and I've also got some black now. The new wiring. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try and tweak the the wiring because it, it, it'll depend a lot on some of the other changes I make. I mean, right now it's hard to picture, but you know, this red panel's gotta go um, and it's becoming quite black heavy. Now I am going to switch the liquid out to white this time. Um, so I'm just going to try and find a balance between what either... You know, I don't know if I want the wires to pop out or do I want it to blend in. So I've got that option now. Um, coming back to the pump. Uh, a good friend of mine from Facebook, John M aka Montemol, has been kind enough to provide me with a... A new pump. I've now got a, a D5 with a AK top, and it's much more powerful, which means the loop's going to be more efficient. It's also a lot quieter as well. It's an absolute brilliant pump. Um, so that's pretty much where I'm at. I just wanted to do a catch-up video. It's not exciting to look at this. More, you know, it's more of a um, what I've got in mind, and where I've been, and why I'm at this point. Sort of video. Not the most exciting. I appreciate, but. Um, I'm going to hit the Google SketchUp now. I'm going to try and design these panels, get them cut. I've got all the wiring to redo. Some drilling. Um, and I hope within the next few weeks I've got something more exciting to show you guys. So as I say, this is just a bridging video between where I ended um, in about, what was it, September-ish last year. And now where I'm going. Once I wrap up, I do hope, I just have to lean over and grab it, I do hope luck is on my side when I try and build something with this.
This is a MSI Z97 Gaming AC Mini ITX board. As I said earlier, I don't know if it'll be this or something slightly bigger, but what I would love to do um, is to downsize this considerably and try and replicate at least the shape and the bulk of the design into a micro ATX or a mini ATX platform. Now I've always said, um, you know, I've been very honest about my own abilities and skills and different things and this is not <laughs> perfect by any stretch of the imagination. If I could go back now, I would cut the width in about 60% of what it is now. I, I'm absolutely stuck now with the design and that's not to say that I hate it, it's just not as practical as I had hoped. So um, I do want to give it what it deserves and that is the finishing touches and then perhaps move on to something else. So that's going to wrap up the video today. Do check the links below if you're not familiar with the build um, and I will return with some better and more exciting pictures and hopefully a, a, a nice video at the end you guys so thanks for watching and i will see you guys in my next video <clears throat>